In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. We welcome you here today, especially the family and the friends of those to be ordained deacons. It is a joy for the Church of Brooklyn and Queens that we come together today to, to, minister, to have new ministers in the diaconate that will serve the Church. We thank their families for their support over these many years of formation. Today, as we come together, we recognize that 
we are not perfect and our church is not perfect and we need always to recognize our faults and sins and seek the Lord's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant we pray that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
Lectura del Libro de los Apóstoles En aquellos días, como aumentaba mucho el número de los discípulos, hubo ciertas quejas de los judíos griegos contra los hebreos, de que no se atendía bien sus viudas en el servicio de la caridad de todos los días. Los doce convocaron entonces a la multitud de los discípulos y les dijeron, no es justo que, dejando el ministerio de la palabra de Dios, nos dediquemos a administrar los bienes. Escojan entre ustedes a siete hombres de buena reputación, llenos del Espíritu Santo y de sabiduría, a los cuales les encargaremos este servicio. Nosotros nos dedicaremos a la oración y al servicio de la palabra. Todos estuvieron de acuerdo y eligieron a Esteban, hombre lleno de fe, del Espíritu Santo, a Felipe, Prórroco, Nicanor, Timón, Parmeas y Nicolás, prosélito de Antioquía. Se los presentaron a los apóstoles y estos después de haber orado les impusieron las manos. Mientras tanto, la palabra de Dios iba cundiendo. En Jerusalén se, multipla, se multiplicaba grandemente el número de los discípulos. Incluso un grupo numeroso de sacerdotes había acepta, aceptado la fe. Palabra de Dios. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you people. fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Deacons must be dignified, not deceitful, not addicted to drink, not greedy for sordid gain, holding fast to the mystery of the faith with a clear conscience. Moreover, they should be tested first. Then, if there is nothing against them, let them serve as deacons. Deacons may be married only once and must manage their children and their households well. Thus, 
those who serve well as deacons gain good standing and much confidence in their faith in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus summoned his disciples and said to them, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and the great ones make their authority over them felt. But it shall not be so among you. Rather, whoever wishes to be great among you shall be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first among you shall be your slave. Just so, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Please come forward. Acérquese en los que van a ser ordenados diáconos. Michael Saez. Carlos Radamés Pichardo. Fabio Parra. Rodrigo Méndez Correa. 
Kevin Matthew McLaughlin. Thomas Edward Jorge. Kevin F. Hughes. Antonio Jorge Gonzalez. Joseph Frida. John Francis de Biasi. Alfredo Castellanos. Rafael Cabrera. Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Relying on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ, we choose these, our brothers, for the order of the, the diaconate. My beloved brothers and sisters, since these are sons who are your husbands, fathers, grandfathers, and friends are now to be advanced to the order of deacons, we must consider carefully the nature of the rank in the church to which they are to be raised. Strengthened by the gift of the Holy Spirit, they will help me, the bishop, and my successors, and the priest in the ministry of the word, of the altar, and of charity showing themselves to be true servants to all. As ministers of the altar, they will proclaim the gospel, prepare the sacrifice, and distribute the Lord's body and blood to the faithful. Furthermore, it will be their duty at the bishop's discretion to exhort believers and unbelievers alike and to instruct them in holy doctrine. They will preside over public prayer, administer baptism, assist at and bless marriages, bring viaticum to the dying, and conduct funeral rites. Consecrated by the laying on of hands that comes down to us by the tradition from the apostles and bound more closely to the service of the altar, they will perform the works of charity in the name of the bishop or the pastor. And with the help of God, they will go about these duties in such a way that they will be recognized as disciples of him who came not to be served, but to serve. And so now, my sons, you are to be raised to the order of the diaconate. The Lord has set an example that just as he himself has done, you also must do. As deacons, that is, as ministers of Jesus Christ, who came among his disciples as one who served, to do the will of God from his heart, serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord himself, since no one can serve two masters, look upon all defilement and avarice as serving false gods. Since by your own choice you are to present yourselves today for the order of the diaconate, you are men of good reputation, filled with the wisdom of the Holy Spirit, as you were chosen, as those who were chosen by the apostles for the first ministry of charity. As one of you who will exercise your ministry consult, committed to celibacy, you know that celibacy is both a sign of pastoral charity and an inspiration to it, as well as a source of spiritual fruitfulness in the world. Compelled by the sincere desire and love of Christ and living in this state with total dedication, you will cling to Christ more easily more and more completely for the service of God and man, and minister more effectively the work of spiritual rebirth. 
Most of you are committed to the marital state, and you must be firmly rooted and grounded in faith and show yourselves committed to your marital vows and must be beyond reproach before God and man, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and of the stewards of God's mysteries. Never allow yourselves to be turned away from the hope which is offered in the gospel. Algunas parablas a los, per los diáconos que hablan en español. Gracias por su fe, per querer servir la iglesia de Brooklyn y Queens. Le doy las gracias a sus esposas y familias por apoyarlos un gran empeño de ayudarles con un gran sacrificio para que ustedes pudieran exercer las responsabilidades diaconal. You now have been only hearers of the gospel, but now you must be the ministers of the gospel, proclaiming it, holding the mystery of faith with a clear conscience and expressing by your actions the word of God which you proclaim by your lips so that the Christian people who are brought to life by the Spirit may be a pure offering to be accepted by God. Then on the last day, when you go to meet the Lord, you will be able to say to him, and you will hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of the Lord. We thank you again for these long years of preparation. We look forward to your service in the Church of Brooklyn and Queens. We thank all who are gathered here today that we see you as part of the community, sent to serve and to love the gospel of Jesus Christ and all that it de demands of us. Be faithful to your ministry, faithful in all ways. So, my dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. And so I ask you, do you resolve to be consecrated for the church's ministry by the laying on of hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the order of deacon with humble charity and the order in order to assist the priestly order for the benefit of the Christian people? Do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with a clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim this faith in a word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? Kevin, you are, are you prepared to embrace the celibate state? Do you resolve to keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of heaven and the service of God and man? Do all of you resolve to maintain and deepen the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with the people of God, with your wives, and indeed with the whole world? I do. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ to whose body and blood you are ministers of the altar? Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise obedience and, 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 and 
and respect to me and my successors. I do. May God always be done the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. I do. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise obedience and respect to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work in you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God who has begun the good work and you bring it to fulfillment. My dear people, let us pray that God, the Almighty Father, will mercifully pour out his blessing on these, his servants, whom in his kindness he raises now to the order of the diaconate. Saint 
perpetua in Saint Felicity. Saint Agnes. Saint Gregory. San Augustine. San Antanasio. Saint Basil, Saint Martin, Saint Benedict, Santos Francisco y Domingo, San Francisco Javier, San Juan Maria Vianney. Saint Teresa, all holy men and women, muestra te propicio, libranos, Señor, de todo. Mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord.
Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportion every order and assign every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision in every age as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power, and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the church is body adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond through the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up a new temple. And as once you chose the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, you now establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve you in your name. And so, as in the first days of the church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your sons' apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in their daily ministry, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, they entrusted to these chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these your servants who, you will, who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, O Lord, we pray the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and the poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct as that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people and offering the witness of a clear conscience. May they remain strong and steadfast in Christ so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become, 
Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the book of the gospel, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the book of the gospels, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet and so set an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant. And by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with the royal priest of the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments and as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and to offer you a constant witness of prayer and faith. And so, Lord, with all the angels and the saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, my assistant bishops, and all those who holding to the truth hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here with faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, 
and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, we pray, graciously accept the oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you and for your servants, whom you are pleased to raise to the order of the diaconate. And in your mercy, keep safe your gifts in them, so that what they have received by divine commission, they may fulfill by divine assistance through Christ our Lord. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it acceptable that it may become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving th you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, Offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as ones you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, and in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through the participation at the altar, may receive the holy body and blood of your Son, and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, those sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, 
with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, and bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power and the glory Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Thank you.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacrament, and of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. I, I'd like at this time to acknowledge the presence of Bishop uh, Labashi, who came to us today from New Hampshire, a priest of Rockville Center, auxiliary bishop there, now Bishop of of Manchester, New Hampshire, came today for Mr. de Blasi, now Deacon de Blasi. Thank you for being here. At this time, we will give the assignments to the deacons. Uh, there's no surprises, I think, for them. They kind of figured it out a little bit. But I always, ha I always say there are no secrets in the church, only mysteries. So there's no mystery today. So Rafael, Deacon Rafael Cabrera, Saint Fortunata, Father Jose Herrera is here. He's coming. Okay. Okay, very good. Can greet Father Herrera as he's coming here. Great, right, thank you. Deacon Alfredo Castellanos, uh, Father Felix Sanchez, and St. Pius V. Okay, very good. Okay, very good. <laughs> Deacon John de Blase for Father Armato, St. Margaret's Village, Mark Middle Village. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Uh, Deacon Joseph Frieda, St. Mel's Flushing. Staying there, Father Gerard Sauer. <laughs> there you go, guys. Very good. Okay. And Deacon Antonio Gonzalez, Macken Heart of Mary, Brooklyn, Father Elias Gill. Okay, okay. We're going to do the Hernada also, you know that. Okay. And he will also do the Hernada movement with the young people of Hispanic origin. And Father Caroli is here to welcome you someplace. Okay. Father, Deacon Kevin Hughes for Father, Ke two Kevins, Kevin McBrien. Okay. Thank you. Very good. We have a lot of deacons there. We expect a lot of work from you. <laughs> uh, Deacon uh, Thomas Jorge, St. Nicholas of Tomlatine, Father jo John Francis. Okay, very good. Do a good job there. <laughs> Where's John Francis? He's coming. Okay. Here you go, John. Okay. Deacon Kevin McLaughlin, St. Ephraim's, and Father Robert Adamo, St. Ephraim's. Okay, you take that, very good. You didn't faint today, wonderful. <laughs> Deacon Rodrigo Mendez, Father William Hoppe from St. Louis in Colonia. Rodrigo, very good. You got a big job there, a lot of people. Okay, thank you, Bill, very good. Deacon Fabio Para for Dural, Father Doral Costa from the Lady of Fatima. Okay. Okay. He's coming here. Very 
Very good. <laughs> Deacon Carlos Pichardo for Father Francis Shannon. Okay. Very good. You got a good job, a new pastor to work with. Okay, Frank. Very good. Deacon Michael Sanez and Father Lawrence Ryan, okay? Okay. I don't know if, I don't know if he's here. He is here. Oh, okay. Very good, Larry. You got a good help. Thank you. <laughs> okay. To, uh, on behalf of my brother deacons, our wives, some of them are here present, our families, to express our most sincere gratitude to our diocesan bishop, the most reverend Nicolas de Marcio, for his leadership, guidance, and unconditional support to our ministry and vocation. Bishop de Marcio, with these 12 men, you have ordained 150 men to the permanent diaconate since you became the, our bishop uh, uh, 14 years ago. Thank you so much for all you have done for us. God bless you. And certainly to the Most Reverend Peter Lavashi, Bishop of Manchester, for coming to, to be with us. Thank you very much. Gracias. <laughs> to our auxiliary bishops, Bishop uh, Chapero, Bishop Massa, Bishop Vitol, Bishop Sanchez, and Bishop Cisneros. Thank you so much for your presence among us today. Thank you very much. A profound word of gratitude to the newly ordained deacons, uh, to their pastors, mentors, parish priests, spiritual directors, evaluation committee members, the scrutinies and admissions, admissions uh, board members, as well as their, as their parishes for their support throughout these five years to you. Thank you so much. Also to my brothers in arms, uh, Father Joseph Divino, Dean of Faculty, Monsignor Caliz, Joseph Caliz. Coordinators of the spiritual directors for all you have done for these men this past five years. Thank you so much for all your help. To the aspirants and candidates uh, and their wives who serve at, as ministers of hospitality. To the diocesan choir, Emmanuel, Jessica. To the seminarians, to Father John O'Connor, Deacon Jaime Varela. To the police department who helped us so much this morning. To all of you, thank you so much. To Monsignor Kieran Harrington and the parishioners of St. Joseph's, mil gracias. Thank you so much for having us today. <laughs> and finally, to all of you, the newly ordained deacons, friends, and relatives, and families, specifically and particularly to their wives, thank you so much for your support, for your love and care. May God bless you always. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Please stand as now we sing the Salve Regina. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae,
I ask my brother bishops to join me in the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially for the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with the preaching of the gospel of Christ help you to live according to his word and to be sincere and fervent witnesses. Amen. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of his son, Jesus Christ, and ministers of unity and peace in the world and in the church. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.